Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Leeds series. The city of Leeds is one of the five metropolitan boroughs of West Yorkshire. 38 civil parishes lie within its boundaries. Which slice of the city are we seeing today? Welcome back to the city of Leeds. And today I'm starting this one next to a war memorial, which is a very nice one. If we just have a little look at it, I'll just pan the camera up a little bit so you can see it. There you go. It's quite nice, that, isn't it? Well, this whole village is quite nice. There's a bridge in this village over the River Wharf. There's a prison and there's Leeds United's training ground. Where do you think this is? Uh, you probably know already because you've seen the title of the video, haven't you? That's cheating. Welcome to Thorpe Arch. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. So today we're tackling Thorpe Arch, the village and civil parish of the same name in Leeds. There's a village to walk around, but first we've got to get there, starting from where we left off last week. That means our first landmarks are not within the village. What you're looking at here is a prison. This is HMP Wheelston, formed by an amalgamation of HMP Thorpe Arch and HMP Rugate. Both original prisons were built in 1965 on the site of ROF Thorpe Arch. The amalgamation took place in 1995, and it was an historic development for the prison service. The resulting prison had a Category C closed side and a Category D open side within one establishment. Further building development has taken place at the prison in recent years. It's now a Category C prison fully and opened as such in 2010 after building work was completed on the former Category D part of the prison. Wikipedia lists one notable inmate, Owen Oyston. Formerly associated with Blackpool Football Club, he served just over three years of a six-year sentence. I'll let you go to Wikipedia and find out what crime he committed. Speaking of football, this part of Leeds has another connection to the beautiful game, although thankfully this is nothing as sinister. This is Leeds United's training ground. The ground and academy are based off Walton Road, the road that runs past the prison to Thorpe Arch. The facility was opened in 1990 to replace one adjacent to Ellen Road Stadium. The facility is on private land called Thorpe Arch Grange and there's strictly no admittance beyond the points where I've been standing. This green area, though, is a recreational space. That's quite the interesting area of Leeds, this, isn't it? On the one side of the road, you've got Leeds United's training ground, and then the other side of the road, you've got a prison. That's uh, quite amazing. We briefly mentioned last week Thorpe Arch Railway Station. The old railway line crosses Thorpe Arch Parish, and it's now been turned into a walking and cycling route. Before the 12th of June 1961, the station was called Thorpe Arch Boston Spa, before dropping the latter part of its name. It opened on the 10th of August 1847 and closed to passengers on the 6th of January 1964. When ROF Thorpe Arch was being built practically next door in 1940, all the building materials were delivered to Thorpe Arch Station. Later, a railway loop with four stations was built around the factory. The station building was designed by George Townsend Andrews in the Gothic Revival style. The size of the building and its representative appearance was due to the popularity of nearby Boston Spa. That's why Boston Spa was added to its name. With the prison, the training ground and the old railway out of the way, it's time to go down this road and find our way to the village. So this is where our main walk around Thorpe Arch will start. 
and almost end although the church here in the village is actually a long way away from the main village it's in between the main Thorpe Arch village and where you've just seen HM prison Wheelston and that's where I'll be ending it's a nice village this let's take a walk around the village is on the north bank of the River Wharf, which separates it from Boston Spa to the south. This will be the very first time we've encountered the River Wharf on the channel. The River Wharf originates within the Yorkshire Dales National Park. For much of its middle course, it's the county boundary between West and North Yorkshire. Its valley is known as Wharfdale. The wharf is 65 miles long, making it the 21st longest river in Britain. It's a public navigation from Tadcaster to its junction with the Ouse near Kaywood, and it's tidal from Ullerskelf to the Ouse. Here it's the boundary between Boston Spa and Thorpe Arch. The bridge I'm standing on is worth a mention. It was built in 1770 as a more reliable all-weather crossing than the Ford just downstream. Thorpe Arch Bridge has five arches, two of which are over the course of the wharf. In February 2022, the bridge was briefly closed due to cracks appearing in the road surface. It's safe now though. After crossing back over the bridge, we're now on Thorpe Arch Park, a road that runs all the way around a cricket field, and this is where Nikki joins us for the rest of the episode. Historically, the parish of Thorpe Arch was in the Ainsty, the division of Yorkshire separate from the Ridings. It had a population of 1,123 in 2001, increasing to 1,591 by 2011. The village is quite small in comparison to the area the parish boundaries cover. It has relatively few amenities, but it does have a primary school and a pub, both of which we'll come to. The first written record of the village was in the Doomsday Book, where it consisted of three farms, a church and a mill. It was recorded as Torp, T-O-R-P. However, the village's history goes back much further. Neolithic, Bronze Age and Iron Age remains have all been unearthed within a few miles, so earlier inhabitation is likely. Romans were also in the vicinity. Rudgate crossed the river at Newton Kaim a mile downstream, where the crossing was guarded by a Roman fort. After the Norman conquest, the village became part of the lands which passed to Osburn of Arks, and as a result became known as Thorpe Darches and this eventually became Thorpe Arch. Thorpe Arch Park eventually runs into another road. The building you can see in shot here is called the Lodge. This is where we come across a parish notice board and Nikki did the honours. Tick it off people of Thorpe Arch, that's 18 down now and only 20 to go in Leeds, we're almost halfway through. Here's the primary school on Dowcow Lane. Now, if you've been following the lead series from day one, you might well recognise the name I'm about to show you on a stone outside this. It seems Lady Elizabeth Hastings loved to get around almost as much as some channel favourites like Vermoyden and de Busley. The school was built in 1836, restored in 1958 and extended in 1968. Thorpe Arch began to take on its present character when the estate and lordship were acquired by William Gossip in 1748. He commissioned the architect John Carr to build Thorpe Arch Hall. The hall is set in Parkland to the northwest of the village and was completed in 1756. Gossip was responsible for the improvement of much of the estate and its housing. Hey Nikki. What? Fancy a drink? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at, I, I, could be, I could be ready for pudding now after that dinner two villages ago. <laughs> this is the packs in and it looks rather nice. They certainly pack it in. I spotted a footpath off the village at this point and went to investigate. What I found was the Thorpe Arch Lawn Tennis Club, founded around the time of the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. Although there's no railway station anymore, there's still public transport here and it's provided by Bus Route 7 to Harrogate, Weatherby and Leeds, operated by the Harrogate Bus Company. Thorpe Arch's industry was based around two water mills. The first was Manor Mill, which at times housed several wheels, the last of which turned in 1958. The mill was used for various things. The buildings were turned into a factory for making electric blankets before being converted into housing. The second mill was Flint Mill, which dated from 1772, and it ground flint for the Leeds Pottery. 
now we're back to the War Memorial. I was surprised to find out that this memorial is not a listed structure. It was unveiled in 1920 and it's got 10 names on it, all from World War I. And our walk around Thorpe Arch comes to a close with this sign opposite the War Memorial. This had some good information about the railway station and it's well worth a read. Okay, uh, that's the main walk around the village. Now we need to hop into the car again and drive up towards the church, which is quite a way away from the actual main village. It's probably not too far to walk, but I've done a lot of walking already today and my legs have had it. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to get into the car and we'll drive to the church. To get to the church, you have to walk or drive like I did up Church Causeway. The church lies to the east of the village and it's almost all on its lonesome. It's of 12th century origin, the south door is the sole remaining aspect of that era. Despite that, it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. The tower is 15th century and the remainder of the church was built between 1871 and 1872 to designs by G. E. Street. There's also a cross shaft here in front of the tower. So Nicky's just noticed, noticed something about this sundial on the uh, wall of the church here. It's the wrong time! Because in this country, we put the clocks forward in the springtime, put them oh, back help. in the autumn. Can you see what time it is on my phone? Nick, it, no, the camera's not picking that up, but oh. it, it's about half past three. And the sundial is showing oh. half past two because it's not been put forward for British summertime. <laughs> Adjoining the church is a separate cemetery, which we had a look in. There was plenty of space for future interments, but it was one grave in the older section that we found interesting. This is the resting place of Angela Janet Vera Cotton, who was the chairman of the National Association of Probation Hostels and was awarded an MBE in 1983. All right, it's time for today's picture bit. And here that comes right now for the parish of Thorvard. Okay, I'm back in the car, having finished another one in Leeds. We're getting through these quite quickly, actually. Leeds is starting to uh, get, get towards its midway point, which is amazing. It seems it only seems like five minutes since I started it. What say you, Nicky? Well, I was about to say, what, what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just ready for a cup of tea and coffee or whatever and feet up and get some stitching out now. It's been a long day. Yeah, it has been a long day. And uh, the final report, off after six villages yeah because this one was filmed by the way at the end of a run of six three in selby uh one in harrogate and two in leeds go on nicky Fourteen thousand five hundred and ten steps which means a couple of pounds off my flabby backside <laughs> that's her saying that not me because trust me i don't think her backside is flabby in the slightest anyway uh, that's enough about that it's time for me to move on to my next one here in leeds and I'll see you wherever that may be because I haven't worked out where it is yet. So, uh, <laughs> oh, time for home. Time for home. This has been the parish of Thorpe Arch, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.